Welcome everyone, this is Pilot Niels, and you're listening to Lotro Players News, where we take a look at Lazy Susan Nitro and here at Lotro Players. And this week we have with us Sanswinda! Hello! And Krister! Hello! Hello there, everyone! And this week we don't have much in the way of news, unfortunately. There were no patches or anything like that that came out this week. The Team was no news on. is good news, right? I suppose so. That might <laughs> be it. I mean, there was a holiday in uh, the country of the developers, so, you know. Yes, there was that holiday, so they most lots of them took... Lots of fireworks and stuff, you know. Right. So most of them took Monday off, and of course there was a official holiday on Tuesday. And some of them might have taken extra vacation time just around that time of year also. So by the time they were doing was getting prepared for next week's update because there is going to be barring anything weird happening because you know sometimes that expected updates have been known to have sudden troubles come up during the during the end of the QA phase. But assuming nothing like that happens, then there will be an update next week. It was mainly to fix on bugs and also to get prep work for the Bugen Treasure Hunt event, which is coming back in, I guess, a few weeks or something like that. I couldn't find the exact date on the calendar. I have more trouble finding the events calendar these days than I had in the past. So I have to get connected to that again. Now, there is one little thing that happened, though. I did watch Cord stream yesterday, and... When he was going through it, he accidentally blurted out the worst kept secret that's currently in Lotro. And that is, he said the words, Lindell B. Housing. Ooh. <laughs> yes. So, but seeing how I think just about everybody already knew that the next housing area was in Lindell B. It wasn't a major leak. <laughs> so, yes, he sort of accidentally confirmed Lindelby Housing yesterday when, when he was talking on something, and apparently, he almost, I guess he was talking out like it was already officially announced or something. I feel like you're kind of delving into the realms of superstition. Like that, uh, like that one myth where if you say Bingo Boffin in the mirror five times, he shows up and slaps you. Oh, I didn't hear about that. <laughs> I I thought that if you said his name three times that he would come out and tell and tell you that you don't look tougher than a dragon. Right. Well, uh, yeah, and then I think at four times you get a free small soda at the movie theater, if I'm not mistaken. Ah, okay. <laughs> 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 All right. Let's head into the store sales. Sans, what's on sale this week? Well, this week we have some... Um, I feel like this is like a continuation of this. The special select sales of the select expansions in the Lodra market. So, through July 9th, you can get... That's like tomorrow. Yeah. You can get 25% off Fate of Gundabad, 50% <laughs> off Dwarf Three Peaks, and 75% off Mordor, 75% off Minas Morgul. If you're hanging this after it comes out on Monday, it will probably not still be on sale. Uh, there are also double bonus points available through tomorrow, Sunday, July 9th. Um, and this is your final week of summer sales, so now through July 13th, you can get 35% off Middle Earth Essentials Pack, 50% percent off crafting and die carryalls, 75% off milestone skills, and if you dare, you can forge your own ring. Get 25% off crafting guild access, ingredient packs, crafting accelerators, rapid craft, crafting tiers, and recipe books through July 13th as well. And we have a weekly coupon for free regeneration food times five with the coupon code SOMEFOOD. Which is also good through July 13th. Right. Well, I suspect if I forged my own ring, it wouldn't be more than a 50 word essay on the craft. So, well, probably fair. won't be very dangerous. 
I thought it would be kind of weird. Uh, what a weird twist of the story if it was an actual forged ring. And so when uh, Gimli went to hit it, it, he snapped it right in half. Probably just shock everybody. <laughs> Wait, this is plastic. <laughs> Uh, well, yes. Well, we don't have any Lotro news on the site this week, but we did have a little bit of news that they announced the date for the release of Return to Mordor, which is now coming this fall on PC through the Epic Game site, PlayStation, and Xbox. And Return to Mordor. Re- Return to Moria. If I said Mordor, sorry about that. You did that. say Mordor. I was like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Return to Moria. Yes. And in Return to Moria, this is a set in the fourth age. And Gimli is leading a team of dwarves over into, into Moria in order to reclaim it. So since this is the fourth age, you no longer have you're within the age where the lore says that that retaking Moria is possible. And this is going to be a crafting survival game. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, so so it'll be done as a crafting, so it's not as an MMO, it's not as a as some of those as a necessarily combat intensive game, it is going to be a crafting survival game. It's going to be for one to eight players. And they're noting that it's most likely that your strategy that you take on it is probably going to depend on the number of players on it because one dwarf is probably a small enough group that you could get around some things without alerting them. If you have eight dwarves, of course, in the same place, going through an area, they're probably going to be yelling at the top of their lungs and <laughs> attacking everything on sight. So, Yeah, isn't eight dwarves in one place called a problem? <laughs> well, the orcs don't call it that. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see how that works on there. Now, it's going to be procedurally generated for Mori. There will be certain things that have to be there because things mentioned in the lore and all that stuff. But it will be procedurally generated that way if you run through it and you visit somebody else's world. Don't expect things to be exactly in the same place in their world where they were in your world. The, because that's the idea on it is to make each version's, each person's version of Moria feel a little bit different and of course like you're exploring it and learning what's there and all of that. So that's scheduled to come out this fall. And one of the things that they noted on there is that the narrator for this is going to be John Riz Davis. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, who else do you get to play Gimli? I guess that makes sense. Yes. <laughs> Yes. So he will be returning on his yes, returning in his role in that. And I think they impl- that during a stream, which the stream was about eight months ago, I have put in a link in the show notes to a stream about eight months ago and it had a couple of people who were involved in the development of the game. Plus it also they had Corey Olson there who was consulted in some of the work that's being there. So they, so Corey doesn't know everything that's going on there and all that stuff in there. But of course, you know, Corey, he's probably going to spend more of his time exploring the architecture than anything else. But anyway, so they'll try, so they'll hopefully try to follow the lore as much as possible in there and and do a good treatment of what would be like in Moria in the Fourth Age as they're coming through. And that is it for our news this week. So let's go into our week in gaming. Ooh, Christopher, what were you up to? 
Well, uh, this Friday night, we got the crew together. Uh, we had a, a person return uh, from an absence, so that was great. And uh, we mustered a six man and we did uh, uh, dealt with some vermin and then did a, a thatter at uh, tier seven for the delving. And overall, had a pretty, uh, pretty nice, quiet, calm, relaxing Friday night. Um, relaxing at seven, tier seven delving? Yeah, amazingly. Yeah, in, in that one, the we figured out that Thatter's the e out of the three of them, it's the easiest because some of them are uh, the other. Two, I think it's the, both of them. The other two are just nightmarish on tier seven. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like this guy won't die. Why isn't he dying? So, uh, so last night was straightforward, relaxing. It was great, um, and then playing a lot on the Valheim uh, multiplayer server, and I've uh, been having a blast doing that, and I've uh, been playing. Uh, Diablo 4 this week. So that was kind of my week. Let's see what you get up to. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't quite sure if you were finished. <laughs> and I had a cracker in my mouth. Uh, <clears throat> well, this week I tamed several crystal wyverns with cinders and arc. And that was pretty fun. And I made myself a new server here in Ark and loaded in some dinos from my other maps with the goal of going spelunking. And spent most of my time actually just making a base though. And then tried out Scrap Mechanic as a birthday surprise for my nephew. And that was pretty fun too. And that was pretty much my week. How was your week, Pine Leaf? Alright, we'll begin with my lore master. My lore master searched through a frozen wasteland for... Half a ring. Was I mean, it an onion ring? <laughs> no, it, it, the ring was supposedly made of some sort of metal. And my runekeeper quested in King's Gondor, so I got through the first area in that zone. And my I joined Friday Night Fights, and we did some skirmishes. And we also ran a couple of the parts of the Great Barrow. We ran Thatter. We ran Great Thatter because that was the featured instance for the week. And we also ran the maze so that my runekeeper could get the key for, for Sammy at some point. So we finished that up. Now, we did in the skirmishing decide to try the way of smiths at tier two and whoever started that way said oh yeah no problem whatsoever that person apparently had never been introduced to a tier two frost grim <laughs> those things come up the because, because that frost grim lieutenant just explodes and just wipes everybody out so so yeah we had some painful experiences with uh, with that as it kept on exploding wiping exploding wiping exploding wiping it took us four tries <laughs> before we finally got rid of it uh Yeah, the Frigid Squall is a really, really nasty lieutenant. And whenever I see it, I say, yikes! Then yeah, I also spent some time in Sand Rock, where, where I was trying out that new game, my time in Sand Rock. And that went, I started to get through the early parts of it, where you sort of make your first major build in there. And that is it for my week in gaming. We currently have 13 supporters on Patreon. If you'd love to join the Celestrious Raid of Players and help support Lotcha Players, you can go to the Nature's page where you can support the Players Alliance on Patreon. Your money you use for podcast hosting, website hosting, and to pay for our live shows. If you'd like to contact us, you can contact us through podcast at lotchaplayers.com. We have two shows here at Lotcha Players. For DDO Players News, recording 
day and times varies. And on Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, we have Loach Players News. You can join us for our shows at loachplayers.com slash live. And that's all for tonight, then. This is Piney Beatles reminding you to skirmish responsibly.